Welcome back guys. So if you recall on my channel, we took a look at the C64 Mini when it released. I had a lot of fun with this device. Wasn't perfect, but it was still pretty darn neat. And now we get to take a look at the C64, the long awaited full size version with working keyboard. This has a lot of new features, some interesting things going on here. VIC 20 mode, C64 mode, boots into it just like the original system. You could utilize this as if it was one of those original consoles or computer systems. 720p, you have 60 hertz, 50 hertz options. Uh, this thing, it's currently only available in the UK, but on Amazon UK, they do ship to the US, even though it says they don't. Just gotta keep an eye on it, sometimes they change it. Taking a little look at the box on the side here, explains what it comes with, and it has the included games listed. 64 games, some VIC-20 games, some C64 games. A lot of options, but one of the biggest things is, is being able to use like a USB drive, load your own programs, make your own programs. Really cool stuff going on here. And yeah, with that working keyboard, this thing is huge. I didn't realize how big it was going to be, how heavy it was going to be. We're gonna weigh this in a moment. You'll get to see how big this thing is or how much it weighs anyway. But man, these keys, like, it, it feels like a classic keyboard. Even though it's new, it feels retro. This is really awesome. Little, you know, closer detail of the keys there. I don't know what all this stuff means, but here's, here's a little sample of the keys getting pressed. Very satisfying for, for whatever reason. It feels old, even though it's not. Very, <laughs> very cool in my opinion. I didn't grow up with this computer. You know, I've never played this thing on a, on real hardware, but I was always interested in it. So that's why I had to get this. Here's the controller that it comes with, a brand new version with micro switches. This thing actually clicks, feels a lot better than the original controller that came with the C64 Mini. That thing left a lot to be desired. As you can see, this was the original one, very stiff stick but no clickiness or anything. Uh, the buttons, eh, you know, it was okay, but this new version, they upped their game quite a bit. So definitely glad on that. Um, because with the C64 Mini, I had to wind up buying some other controllers for it that were a little pricey. These Speedlink uh, controllers, I don't recall their exact name, but these had micro switches and were very quality. And now the included controller is on par with that. So definitely a good thing that they up that, you know, the quality and actually put micro switches in that new controller. Really cool stuff. And the other box that is in here, we get like a Euro plug, whatever this is called. It's a UK product. So obviously it's going to come with their standard, but you don't need it. It just uses USB to power up. You can use this in the U S don't trip comes with a HDMI cable, everything good to go, ready to roll. It comes with a quick guide as well, which is a little disappointing. It's only a couple pages in each language. The reason it's disappointing is because they have another manual on their website that's in the same format as this book. And I wish they would have just printed that through it in the box because it goes over tons of information, booting the system up like it was the original console, how to do things in basic, you know, giving you a little refresher course a lot of interesting things. I wish they would have printed that and put that in the box because I haven't used basic in ages, probably like over 20 years. I'm going to have to really refresh myself to get the most out of this, but it is still something I'm really excited to get my hands on and to start playing around with. Just give me a little angles here. We get, you know, additional USBs this time around. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, you know, a couple more over the C64 Mini anyway. Oh yeah, we've got to weigh this thing. This is definitely not a Mini Classic Edition system. With it being full size, it's got a little heft to it. So here it is. She weighs three pounds, 5.1 ounces. Hefty little fella or girl, whatever you want to call it. But let's go ahead and plug it in and check some stuff out. Let's do it. Okay guys, so we've got the system booted up. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at what the games are that are included. Look at some of the features and options we have here. Uh, in a later video, I'm right now I'm just gonna scroll through the list of games so you can see what's included. 
But at a later date, I'll do a deeper dive into the system because I didn't grow up with the C64. Some of this stuff is going to be foreign to me, especially going into classic mode, booting into the C64 or VIC-20 computer mode, where it runs like the original system. That's foreign to me. So I'm going to have to really refresh up on basic and how these uh, things work with the C64. Um, but in carousel mode, you don't have to worry about that stuff. But it's still interesting that you have those options and the way it works. If you grew up with this, you're going to be right at home with that classic mode. And I'll kind of take a look at it in a moment because there's some neat options with that. But for me right now, it's, it's mostly about what are the included games. And you're going to notice if you're familiar with the C64 Mini that it does share a lot of the same games. There's going to be a handful of things that are different. But for the most part, you're going to see a lot of the same stuff. But the cool thing with this, just like the, the Mini, is that you can load up games from USB. You could load up games, programs, that kind of stuff. And I find that interesting and cool. With this, nothing special you got to do. It's just ready to be able to do that. There was an update that you had to do to um, fix like an issue that they had with the classic mode with the keyboard. Just something very minor. I've already ran that update. I'll show you how you would do that in a moment, but it's very simple. You throw the update file on your USB, plug it in, and then access it. And it just updates and then reboots. Very simple stuff. But there we go. A lot of interesting games. For me, the Mini was really cool. I, it wasn't my favorite Mini Classic system, the C64 Mini, but I did play it more so than any of the others because, I mean, I, I grew up with the NES, uh, Super Nintendo, that kind of stuff. I still own a bunch of games and those consoles so for me it was like this was new so i played it quite a bit and i i think this one is even more interesting with it being a full-size working keyboard and all that good stuff but let's go ahead and take a look at some of the options real quick we have display settings uh pixel perfect uh and crt filter and then european 43 with the CRT option and then North American 43 with the CRT option so you got some cool stuff there uh, let's see, what is this A for? Uh, language. Well, when you first boot this up, the very first time it'll ask you for language. It'll ask you if you want to boot into 50 or 60 hertz mode. Um, and then it'll ask you if you want to go into classic or carousel mode by default. So let's look at the settings. Computer model. You can pick C64 or VIC-20. Uh, I'm just leaving it at C64 for now. The boot mode. Carousel if you just want to play some games classic if you want to relive like the, the good old days when you originally had this system or if you just want to learn uh, the way it worked that's pretty cool we'll go into that in a moment uh, system information here if you do have that firmware update on your usb uh, drive plugged into any of the usbs this is where it would show that you have that update and to run it uh, very simple and easy to do switch to classic mode it'll just take us right back to classic mode shutdown or factory reset you can shut down here or you can just hold the power button and it will shut down. Now, I'm going to boot up a game from the USB drive. If you have a USB attached, this option will be here. If you don't, it won't show up. So let's go into that. I only have one game on here at the moment. Let's take a look, see what it is. Oh, I remember now. It's uh, Super Mario Bros. 64. So it's not Mario 64. It's the original Super Mario Brothers remade homebrewed for the c64 i thought this was pretty cool so why not show it here you can use the keyboard um, to navigate the menus and all that stuff if you want um, like you would press u for up j for down h for left k for right the return button um, to enter and stuff like that you know some of the keys are going to be quite a bit different than what you're accustomed to if you didn't grow up with this system damn it uh, but it, it, it is usable if you know how to use it. Oh, crap. But, yeah, you have those options. You could plug in other USB devices. Uh, you know, there's going to be other controllers that you can use with this system. So I think that is really cool. This not, like, I mean, this isn't the way I would prefer to play Super Mario Brothers, but I thought it was pretty interesting to see. A little bit of slowdown there. Uh, with this, you know, if you use the controller, like I'm doing, the joystick, you have to press up to jump um, and then the fire button to run or shoot fireballs ah, i died okay so if you hit the menu button 
on the controller or the combination on the keyboard, you can go into the little menu here. Save state, load state. Uh, you you could save games. Uh, you know, you have save states, right? Or load them up. So let's go ahead and load that one up. Boom. So yeah, I didn't just screw up that level. I just beat it. What? <laughs> um, virtual keyboard, if you need it, that still can come in handy if you're farther away from the system. But we have a keyboard built in now. So, I mean, not 100% necessary. Let's go ahead and exit. Get out of that. And then check out another game real quick. Uh, like I said, I'll do a deeper dive on this in the very near future. Uh, especially after I've had time to really mess with things. But let's, uh, you know what, let's, before we do that, let's, let's switch to classic mode so I can show you that real quick and then go back into a game. Oh, I almost thought something went crazy there. But there you go. You could, you know, if, if you know what you're doing, which I don't really know what I'm doing. Like, I know you would be like, uh, load. Oh, shit. I'm like hitting all sorts of things, man. Okay, there we go. Load. Um. Yeah, it's not doing anything. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't really know how to use this. I think I just screwed that command up anyway. But there you go. If you wanted to mess around with that, if you actually knew what you're doing, like I don't, I didn't claim to. So I'll start busting my balls. Um, but here we go. We can um, we can change the settings there again. Device settings. We can go into um, Vic 20. I thought that was pretty cool. So if we exit out, it's going to reset up. And now we're in Vic 20 mode. So if you're familiar with that or the C64, boom, you have options. I thought that was really cool. Media access, you would go through here to access whatever media you have plugged in. Um, so really neat stuff. Like I said, not um, I'm not really familiar with all this at the moment, but you can easily go back to carousel mode. So there's that. Let's jump into Cosmic Causeway uh, before we end this video. Take any requests from you guys, uh, stuff that you'd want to see. Whoa. Oh shit. Yeah, I remember this one. You have to... Oh my god, you have to dodge the... Ugh. I'm not doing too well, my friends. <laughs> uh. Oh my god. Okay, we gotta get out of that one. I'm, I'm, it's too early in the day for me to be playing something like that that's so fast-paced and, and crazy. Uh, let's see. Cyberdyne. Let's jump into that one. But yeah, I'll take any requests, stuff that you want me to check out on this or... Um, if you have any hints, tips on how to how to do certain things in the classic mode, let me know. Uh, I know I have a lot of viewers um, who grew up with this and would have more knowledge than I do. Oh crap! <laughs> but I, I'm digging this. I'm gonna have you know a blast messing around with it. Uh, it's about a hundred dollar device. I know some people are not gonna be interested in it because of the guy who. Oh wow who owns the company who put this out, uh, the Retro Games Limited, not Kosh Media. I think Kosh Media produced it, possibly. Um, but the guy who, like, you know, owns the C64 and all that stuff, he's one of those people who purchase up, uh, you know, properties that people don't care about anymore or are just lost or being sold for a cheap price. And, you know, he's had some issues where he's filed copyrights against people. He scoops up properties that kind of thing. Some people say he's like a copyright troll. I don't know. I know there's a YouTuber he was filing claims against uh, for using the character Horus a while back. I'm sure some of you guys are familiar with that. So I don't blame you if you don't want to support the guy, but I think it's still a neat device, an interesting piece of history. Um, I think a lot of people are going to enjoy it regardless. So hey, really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. Let me know what you think, what you want me to test out. If you got any tips for me, let me know. And with that said, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out, bye-bye, and boom. Bye.